show us new things, but we'll see what happens here. Snake actually going to start things off. They're on the blue side now, banning away the LeBlanc and IG answer with his Aerith. I'm really interested, you know, just talking about the Callista for a moment, Page Time. One thing that really interests me is that I am, when we watch that, very little Callista play. A lot of teams in other regions have fallen away from the Callista after the attack frame was changed. The 66% to 100% slight nerf in patch 5.4. Still very highly prioritized in the LPL. Obviously, a lot of trained uh, Callistas, we talk about Uzi's Callista, now Crystal's Callista. It still seems to be a common pick. I don't know if it's ban worthy. I feel like that nerf was surprisingly large, despite the fact that it looked deceptively small. And as the bans come through, a lot of mid lane focus. Yeah, again, two mid lane bans this time for Snake with Ari joining LeBlanc there for the second. Xerath banned out again for IG, and Jana will also get banned away from Ella. Turgath banned yet again by Snake, this time on the blue side, so maybe Bucket doesn't even play it, and Snake just respect the pick so much, but IG have not very much longer now to secure their last ban, and they are going to go with Callista there. It's so crazy that in a game between Snake and IG, Snake are the ones banning out three mid lanes. We already said Rookie plays everything a bit like Pawn. And now, with, again, we see the priority coming through of the Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai being valued over nearly, nearly falling through picks and bans, as you mentioned, and so far not being uh, considered. Yeah, and I wonder if Rookie will take the victor away here. He played already to good success. That would take away another champion of Barker's at least look comfy on, given that he's transitioning a little bit to this new patch, especially with, of course, the expected Xerath pan at this point. I do have a lot of different choices to make here. They could opt in again for Nidalee, maybe build some sort of siege comp here, but not much longer for ID to make up their mind with the Rex like already going over to Beast. And it is going to probably, yeah, looks like a very comfy tank on the top side. So tie back to Maokai with Pokemon on the bench. And Kakao going to lock in the victor there for Rookie. They steal away the solo laners that Snake were running pastry time. But the important consideration is there's still wave clear champions that Barker Shonis can play. You can still play the Lissandra quite happily against the victor wave clear and then still have the potential to gap close and get an assassination kill. So they haven't removed the wave clear from Barker's options. There's a tie on the Maokai. You know, Pokemon's probably watching on the bench wondering what he has to do to get back in the team if they're considering this. Why not the Fizz? Why not something to deal with a backline hyper carry that Callista's shown, sorry, Crystal's shown such a penchant to run? It will look excellent now, given the Cogmores being hovered. Yeah, and Lulu not banned away. Actually, one of the key bans from game one here. We'll be quite surprised to see Snake not take it away, given that they could just take the Dragon Mine. That's much smarter there. Take away Morgana, take away Lulu. IG almost forced to pick Cogmore now. That's... That's awkward. That is awkward. That's very awkward. I mean, the, at best, it's going to be a Protect the Cog comp. Definitely no options for a Juggermore. We've already seen EDG try and fight Snake's Juggermore with a mid-game comp. Corky in that comp, Twisted Fate. They couldn't get enough work done in the mid lane. And IG, maybe they'll just be going for the same sort of situation. Try and out-rotate. If you can break the base early against Juggermore, you do have a win condition. But if you can't, the games and Snake play this uh, composition to a T. I mean, maybe just go for some rotational play here as well. IG going to posture aggressively for their dual lane. Makes a lot of sense given what we're expecting out of Snake here, but instead going to take the job in here for Kakao with Lee Sin open and Leona there for Kitties. And given that Siv has been quite a precocious laner, has been losing out in a lot of lanes in recent weeks, they don't want to necessarily show the Siva just yet. Still looks to be the pick given that it synergizes so well with Maokai, with Jarvan, with Leona and the gap close that they're looking for. But no need to pick that come just in case Snake move away from the Juggermore, but I can't see them doing that. They have all the parts of it. They can even add in Aurelia for a bit of damage and just choose their top laner because they've got all the other parts of the comp. Yeah, I mean, like you said, Barker has played Lulu before, so that's probably his role here in this comp. Morgana can go almost anywhere. We've seen both Flandre and Ella play it to good success in recent weeks as well. But this would make sense. I love this pick as well, actually, for Snake. The Cogmore, as expected, comes through for Crystal, but Flandre has Mundo in the top. And suddenly they pick Mundo, and then if you don't pick a Tank Buster, good luck getting through from Mundo. The game was on a timer just with the Juggermore comp. You you throw in a Mundo and there's two timers and they're both so, so scary. The double sun, sand, uh, sand, where am I going with this? The sand timers, you know, uh, are going to be timing down. And IG, they need to find a way with just an AD carry pick to unsettle what looks like to be a late game force. And this, this would be an AD carry pick. It would work, but it would be very hard to run against this comp potentially. The lane matchup itself, if it is going to be Cogmore, is already a little bit tenuous. So, kid, he's... I was going to say thinking about it, but he's finished it. IG, they're going to go with Vayne here again. Makes a lot of sense given what Snake have, but a very dangerous pick. Two Vaynes in two weeks. Of course, we saw Imp running the Vayne for LGD last week. 
this is what you need to break through Mundo, so I can understand the pick. But it's not patch 5.5 just yet, but we're getting a preview. The two tank shredders in the lineups, Cogmore for Snake and the Juggermore comp. And Kid returning to the vein a long time since we've seen him play a hyper carry like this, but almost necessary given the Mundo that was picked by Snake. But again, I'd like this this lane matchup is one of the actually good ones for Cogmore. I mean, he, he has good moments in his lanes, but we'll see how it shakes out here. Flandre versus Marker. Even this is a decent matchup for Flandre. Absolutely. Marker can happily farm from range. He can get in there and wave clear with the burning agony. He has plenty of options. The tie has very low kill pressure on the Maokai. And this is what happens when you early pick the Maokai. People can either go for a carry kind of top. We saw, of course, the Fizz answer from uh, Zatai last time. Or just go for another tank and a hyper carry tank in this Dr. Mundo. Yep, he's going to go back to his favorite. New favorite, it seems like, Rek'Sai with the Javan aggressively. There for Kakao. Baka back on Lulu. Didn't have the best looking Lulu game, but did his job certainly in that comp. And Crystal here, definitely the star of this particular team comp with the Kog'Maw up against the vein of all champions. And Elliot going to take Morgana again for a second go around with Kitties. Another good engaged support. And Vayne Leona, unless they get a surprise level two, the Black Shield will negate a lot of what they're looking to do. They can look to switch targets, but I don't necessarily feel like they can overwhelm this defensive lane well, from Snake. We'll have to find out if they can because we're getting straight into the next game. And welcome back into the Rift here. Snaker up a game in this first best of two for week nine, I believe, of the LPL. So many games so far. Both of these teams have looked on and off. Certainly more on for Snake recently with IG trying to find their new identity and struggling for points here towards the end of the season. Need to at least get the split here. And Snake, they haven't gone quite full Juggermore. It's not three support champions, but they're close to it. That Crystal will definitely be positioned towards the front of the fight, but Dr. Mundo, you can't get behind him. He'll be the true front line. And this game is it's a set of timers. It's Can Crystal get enough items for the utility scaling on Snake to really accentuate the massive late game damage coming out from Crystal, and will Flandre be able to get unkillable? Unkillable against a Vayne, very difficult to do, but still possible. We'll have to see here as Snake might even look for an early lane swap here, or predicting potentially that IG want to swap away. I expect Kid to not take the 2v2 if he can help it, and right now Snake and IG actually are all grouped towards the center of the map. And when you speak to Vayne players, or AD carry mains in general at the competitive level, they say Vayne definitely fits into the meta, especially on 5.5 with all the tanks coming through, but you need a lane swap, so it has to be IG, you have to think, looking for that lane swap, not giving any early information out despite five wards being put down by Snake. There's yeah, some decent defensive vision, but just a fan there and no deep vision down to really spot off where IG are. So they'll get what they want here. They actually haven't seen them, but they'll get the swap. But Snake do actually spot them out in a ward. But at 150, it's going to actually be a late invade and they should get both the swap and also ensure that they'll get the two buffs. Yeah, so smart here as well. Just to, you know, again, take over the top side of the map. You're already going to put your AD carry there and you want to take this side of the jungle vertically to protect your vein. Makes sense. We're going to have Beast walk up towards the blue. In fact, Morgana's already walking towards the area, but Crystal will be protected on the Cogmore, but maybe more importantly, Kid's going to be protected on Vayne. And IG two games in a row. In the first game, they get the 1v1 matchup with the no-flash Hecarim. In this game, they get the lane swap when they desperately need it. Of course, it didn't pay off in the first game, but it went so, so long. It looked like Snake might have been able to run them over, but they couldn't. It was smart play coming through from IG. In this game, though, they get the lane swap they're looking for, and it looks like at least they're setting themselves up for as much success as possible. Yeah, have a quick pause here. It's Flandre currently following the jungle there as well. Pop back into the game very quickly, so nothing uh, too bad there. And again, Flandre was following around, still actually following the Rek'Sai here, and the same story, of course, for Kakao and Zatai. Absolutely. So the jungling, the vertical jungling, as you mentioned, they're actually getting to a turret very, very early. That's not the Gromp. They're looking for someone to port into lane. It's not going to happen. So no turret dive coming through from IG. And the jungle follow will continue. Yeah, Ella's actually down the bottom as well. But Crystal, I believe, started a freeze here in the bottom side. And IG are already pushing the top side of the map. So going to be uh, a bit more beneficial, potentially, on how the early pushing shakes out here. And of course, very wave clear centric here in the mid side as well. Not expecting too many fireworks in the mid lane. No, Barker, as you mentioned, not necessarily looking for the solo kills on the Lulu. He's decent at this champion. Look, he just needs to wave clear. He doesn't want to give up any pressure. So given that it's wave clear versus wave clear, apart from the level six spike coming through when Rookie gets the Chaos Storm, not too much to worry about for the Lulu. No, especially if she has her ultimate also, depending on how the experience maps out. But Barker seems to be consistently sticking to wave clear champions. You know, Azir and Zerath, his two big ones were, of course, good at that. And Moving away from Azir and Zerath when it gets banned, which is frequently now, Lulu and uh, Victor make a lot of sense for this sort of and player. There's just no way to ban out all the wave clear champions with three bans. Lissandra
Chandra made it through picks and bans was another option for the mid lane. But with Lulu being left up, and to be honest, in the third rotation of picks, Lulu being available is a surprise in the L, but it's always been a prized pick because it gives you the flexibility of either running the Juggermore or denying a potential Juggermore from the enemy. Snake getting Lulu, always a surprise to me. Yeah, we could see Beast and Ella actually coming into the top side of the map. They spotted Kakao and Zatai actually looking for a gank there, but Flandre going to come in now, be uh, the recipient of 2v2 lane, I guess, and start collecting experience up against Kid and Kitties. Mundu has to be very careful against the main, especially if Leona can get on top. But uh, Crystal just deep freezing the bottom lane here. He's farming away happily. And you'll always see people path towards a turret dive on a Dr. Mundo because the easiest time to take him down is pre-6 and pre the first item like a Giant's Belt or another big health pickup. He only has a slow, so he doesn't have a stun to force you to take extra turret hits. He's a very easy champion to turret dive, and that's really the only window to take advantage of this Mundo pick is early in the game. So 2v2, that's the result. Yeah, Ella here to protect Flandre though with the Black Shield, so we'll at least keep Kitties off Mundo for a while, but Flandre is not going to have any fun. Veins are a very fine top laner in her own right, against melees especially, and Mundo the tank will struggle early on. And Kitties, honestly, should just be looking to block these cleavers. Of course, you can farm very good from range, has a decent base damage, and it's the first max coming through from Mundo. Stop him from getting any of the last hits, but they're looking like they might engage. Yeah, actually gets tagged there as well, but the Black Shield comes a little late, but will deny the follow-up stuns. The tie there actually getting knocked up down the bottom, but he's actually forced to flash his beast to get out of it, but now Ella going to land a binding on the top side. Flandre going to throw a cleaver in as well, and it's a bit of harassing the 2v2. Kitty still has, I believe, three biscuits, so that's plenty of regen. They're happy with the wave being frozen under the IG turret. That's a result of all the, the timing, so it's definitely great wave control coming through from and they're going to keep pruning this and ensuring that there's never really any safe farm for Dr. Mundo. Yeah, I like the movement actually down the bottom. Uh, trying to break some of the freeze there for Crystal. So, Barker here now in the mid lane. Going to keep poking back and forth. A little low on mana actually as Crystal. You can see he has the wave in a very nice spot. So, tight level 3 actually with the level 3 points in W there as Kitty's now going to land the Zenith play. But we'll get bound there. Flandre though, the target for Kitty as he chases in. But he'll lead a cleaver. Ella has to be careful at level 2 as well. These are very squishy supports in top laners and right now. You can definitely see Kitty's is very experienced in this Leona versus Morgana matchup. Smart thing to take into solo queue is use the Zenith Blade onto the Black Shield, then change targets the rest of your CC. Yeah, great stuff there as well. Crystal continuing to freeze the lane as best he can. Maokai able to break it a little so it's reset slightly, but as we said, both the AD carries getting free farm, and for once that favors the vein. It does favor the vein, as you mentioned, though not by too much. Of course, massive range in late game fights with all the disengage and vein. She's going to get into 550 range or less against Dr. Mundo, against Rek'Sai, against but even the soul shackles coming through from Ella. There's a lot of punishment for vein in these fights if she's not really on point with her positioning. And again, I love the pick from IG. It's ingenious almost to sort of realize what's happening to you. They could have taken Cogma, but it would have been so awkward, and there's still a hyper carry for Crystal to play. They've played Protect the Crystal comps before. So just, you know, Give it up, realize that you need something. And a last pick vein was great, but kind of a wonky team comp they were forced to glue together here. And IG might struggle in big 5v5 moments. Absolutely. It's not a lot of necessary synergy for the vein pick, but it was just necessary the moment they saw Dr. Mundo. It's hard enough to try and out-rotate and break the base. Let's say a corky in this matchup. But the moment they saw Mundo... There's just too many factors together that really, really meant that you couldn't go for the mid game. You needed a late game tank shredder, a hyper carry like Vayne. So they've managed to navigate the early game quite well, the first seven minutes, given what could have happened. Having equal CS on Vayne compared to Cogmore with Vayne Leona is just fine and no sustained Vayne lane, doing just fine in the laning phase. And Flandre is getting zoned out of a lot of experience in the top lane and has to, of course, share the experience with the support. Yeah, I like that Zatai's trying to, again, get these waves pushed in, but level 5 for the Maokai, just taking so much harass from this Cogmore early on, now with his living artillery available. I mean, Zatai just has to back off. Crystal is diligently freezing this wave as far back as he can here. And Maokai can clear every now and then with saplings, but... A head in CS is a good against Flandre because Mundo, as you said, is the other big loser here in this early game. And look, you have good long-range CSing as Flandre, but it is blockable. It is, of course, only single target. You have a lot more options on Maokai, especially as you get levels between the high base damage saplings and the arcane smash. But the result, two tanks, just not picking up a lot of CS. No, and that might actually hurt both of them with so much AD carry power coming in as well. Uh, squishy tanks are not a good thing in the mid game, especially in both Vayne and Cogmore. Going to be shredding through the front line in early skirmishes. You have to say that Maokai has a lower item threshold to be relevant, though. You know, can just build a catalyst, work towards even just a completed Righteous Glory. It's a relatively cheap purchase, but synergizes so well with his kit. They've already got gap close coming through from Vayne, from Jarvan, from Leona in fights. Righteous Glory would be a massive pickup. And Mondo, it's the third item. It's when he gets, say, 
the War Mugs, the Spirit Visage, then into the Randoms and the Thorn Mail that we talk about. Yep, Mundo's unkillable. But in the, you know, the first five, 6,000 gold worth of pickups, he's still human. Yeah, Bucker actually does make it to base in the queue. We'll follow him home. Ella, level three on the Morgana, going to back off there as well. And we're actually going to have a swap back here. We see this a lot from Vayne players. In fact, Imp, who played it last weekend that you mentioned already, Papa, uh, did this exact same thing. As soon as he had enough for his build order, and Kid even has a bit extra, happy to go back into the 2v2. I mean, there's two factors that make you want to re-opt into... A 2v2 is vain. Not uh, just discounting completely the potential of picking up dragons. So of course, having two members down bottom does give them a semblance of dragon control. Big first factor is a bit of sustain. You know, the, 12, the 10, 12 percent life steal coming through from the bilge water. But also level six, you have so much kill pressure. Of course, with the consistent chase coming through from the final hour, and now the CC coming through from the bilge water. So the bilge water pickup and the dagger, decent kill pressure, sustain if the lane goes wrong, and dragon control. Just the perfect strategical rotation for IG. Yeah, nice stuff. But Crystal goes, does his first shop and answers with, I think, the correct item in this choice also. Now back in the 2v2, has the sheen. And Vayne, who's already getting pretty grossly outranged with bio Arcane Barrage active here, going to take even more punishment now. I mean, that's, that's what Cogmore's all about. It's about the burst trades at this point in the game without any sort of peeling available from apart from the black shield so burst trade from the sheen auto attack is going to be decent burst very low base stats coming through from Vayne. So burst trades from range, not going to be looking for the all-in. So happy to pick up the Sheen first and just work towards the Phage. And Crystal continuing to keep his wave in a spot back towards his turret, but that might give IG the wiggle room to take out this dragon. There's four members on it already. Silverbolt's going to rip through it. There is vision around, but Beast can't get in range for a steal. And then the first dragon, once again, going to go to IG. That was a bit scary, though. It did reset. You were worried about potentially the Dark Binding coming through to steal it. Worth knowing that Kid is maxing the Silver Bolt here. That's pretty standard. Not even a second point into Tumble. We see a lot of players get that second point in Tumble for the lower cooldown, for the slightly higher damage. But still, just one point Tumble, four points and to Silver Bolts. Yeah, it makes sense with the lane swap situation especially. Might pick up a point at some point, but going to get one pretty soon anyway sure. at level 8. So probably not too fussed here. Ella... Going to hang out, throws a binding up, but Kakao will dodge it away. Lots of farming actually in the early stages. Trailblazer here for Kakao, but Kid takes the first early trade and drops instantly to 40% health. Those burst trades, you can't all walk away as a 550 range or less uh, vein. You're going to take a lot of damage in trades. Half health for no ability to get any return trade damage. Yeah, and you can see Crystal keeping the wave in the spot that he wants. We've seen him farm so effectively on so many different late game carries. He's very well practiced at, you know, freezing waves, collecting a lot of CS. He's got 105 already here in this game with not even 11 and a half minutes to go and picked up ridiculous amounts of CS in the first game here as well. Just very practiced in this sort of situation. Snake are good at playing around him and IG, you need to pick up the pace a little bit. One dragon's good, but it's not quite enough. And you do worry pace times that we said this is the healthy time for Vayne to rotate back into a 2v2. You can see how much they gained from actually picking up the lane swap because even despite the item timings hit, suddenly a 15 CS lead grown for Cogmore. It looks to only grow, to be honest, because of course, Leona in a long lane, she can't really provide very much in a 2v2 in this situation, has to all in or back away, offers no sustain. So the strategic options coming through from Vayne are limited and triple dagger just for a bit more uh, early game power. No point waiting for that recipe completion, the 950 gold, because he needs the power now from the... Uh, the three decks. Yeah, it's just going to take too long. So Kid even swapping back now as well, which I think is another smart choice for Invictus Gaming. They're kind of like, you know what? We tried the 2v2. Didn't really like it, so we'll move back around. Of course, with Dragon down, it's a fine time to make the swap. And Barker still wave clearing very patiently, but we might even have a dive onto Old Flandre here. Yeah, crucially, it was with the Dragon to show for the swap. You know, they do swap back now, so they're not swapping with their tail between their legs, but they have to, to some degree, to try and deal with Flange. And as you mentioned, the dive, it's looking like it's on. Great flash there as well, but the Zenith Flay going to follow in after Solar Flare and an easy first blood gets gifted to Kakao. And sitting on 2360 gold was the Mundo. We talk about that first item time. It should have already been achieved. It would have been a lot harder to dive Flandre that, that early if he had a Giant's Well, if he had, say, even the... Uh, the Warden's Mail on top of it, but very greedy with his first back, and that's why the rotation is very on point from Invictus Game. Yeah, even has his teleport there, so exceptionally greedy from Flandre, but actually goes back for a Spectre's Cow. Makes sense in the lane matchup with Maokai to get a Spirit Visage early, so we'll see where he wants to go, but if I do keep the swap up, they're actually in a very good spot. I was about to say, maybe this is just the go button to keep Vayne in that Dr. Mundo lane. He has a lot of chase potential. Snake actually goes in aggressively. Yeah, it's a tie actually now in 
a bit of trouble as Beast and Elegant to dive in on top. Ultimate pop there for Ella. Flashes to stay in range as well. The tie so tanky with his ulti popping away. And actually Beast taking turret. It says the tie might even answer back with a kill. The Twisted Advance back on the pool there. And Crystal moves in and swoops in for the kill. The return aggression from Zatai, a trade to, uh, uh, return towards its mid-aggressive tendencies. The swap is still on. They're looking for another, another turret dive. Yeah, Flandre, no health here and just condemned into the wall. Ultimate there, Kakao gets another kill onto the top lane. Definitely a lot smoother for IG with a turret dive than it was for Snake, but the same result, although it might be an inner turret. Yeah, this is a great push here for IG, using those three daggers super effectively there as well, and killing Flandre twice, plus getting two turrets. This is the sort of play that IG need, because, again, the time is that they're being presented with a very scary. And Snake take wing a blue buff is quite small in the grand scheme of things. The teleport still being available for Flandre might be relevant when we're talking about the next dragon coming through. Kid staying in the swap was very intelligent play. Now has the Blade of the Ruin King. Now might be able to threaten assassination potential on Crystal. So maybe finally, yep, looks like he's going to be returning to that 2v2 lane that he wasn't wanting to opt into a few minutes ago. No, and Flandre might get some time to farm up very aggressively if he wants to keep his wave all the way back towards his inhibitor tower. But Trinity Force is also done for Kog'Maw, so Crystal probably confident in the 1v1 or 2v2 up against the vein, plus whoever. So we'll see how that shakes out. Dragon back up in a minute 40 there as well. Everyone else sort of powering up. In fact, it's been a very quiet mid lane, and Rookie's ahead in CS. But you can see that Rookie respects the pushing power coming through from a CDR AP mid Lulu. Has gone for the CDR boost, just the earlier burst in cooldown reduction. Actually sitting on top of... Uh, 28% cooldown reduction, so 38% when he has the blue buff. Just wants to be able to counter push. Not a lot of kill pressure, but that's not really relevant in a Lulu versus Victor lane. No, they're just happy way of clearing. And they've been doing quite a bit of it here. Baka going to catch up a bit. Still behind in CS by... 15 or so, so not too bad. And this next dragon, probably our big point of contention. The tie, though, going to take quite a bit of damage. The Fage here helping out a lot in this Trinity Force Cogmo. You can see how deadly he is, even as the red buff there as well. Flashing aggressively forward, and the tie should get solo kill. Crystal, one last auto just in time. It was actually still a turret. I didn't even remember there was a turret there, but it was smart to flash through from Crystal. It looked overly aggressive, but with the turret being alive, that was the only way to secure the kill. Kid's gone on quite the walkabout, was looking like he was going to go bottom, now walk top again. Dr. Mundo, though, cannot enter lane against this vein. No, but if he keeps away back in farms, he might be okay. But like you mentioned, Kid's kind of meeting it here and just keeping it far towards their turret. So going to be some struggles. Kid does need to catch up in CS as well. Actually behind 30 right now for Crystal. So those kills that he's gotten from the dives, or the assists at least, quite helpful in terms of early goal. But Crystal just getting further and further ahead. They've delayed the Mundo, but not the Kog'Mo. And that's potentially, as we look to the mid-game, the scary thing for Invictus Gaming. Yeah, 700 is the gold lead for Crystal over Kid, but that was mostly unspent gold. He hasn't gone back to shop just yet, so it's not a big factor. Teleport early comes through from Dr. Mundo. They want to get as much vision around this dragon as possible to Snake. Flandre only level 9 here, just the Spectre's color, Ruby Crystal, and his Doran Shield. So he's quite squishy here. IG, as you can tell, don't have much vision. Do pop a ward in there, but the pink ward should spot it off. But Snake are interested in finishing the dragon. They need to get something done here. Kakao's been bound up. Baka will polymorph him as well. They still haven't finished the dragon. The tiger going to dive in, and Crystal going to try and get it done. But Ruby Rookie gets the first kill on Tabaka. Beast forced to get out there as well. The dragon's still alive on less than 800 health. But Kids popped his ulti and gets another kill. Crystal should be the next to fall here as well. Q there is dormant enough for Rookie. Comes in with a death ray for the snipe though. And a 3 for 1, 3 for 0 win, sorry, for IG. And that was with a lot of unspent gold on Kogmo. Kogmo's not at the point where they can look to 5v5 around the strength of that hyper carry void monster. And Kid just was able to, despite the fact that he was spit away from his team, didn't die. Beast couldn't do anything to stop him. And was getting free auto after free auto. The chase power from IG is massive, even without a Righteous Glory, and a big team fight win for IG. It should be the bottom turret as well. Yeah, pretty much any fight we were getting chased by a van usually ends poorly, and Kid, with his zeal there as well, perfectly equipped for that next dragon fight. Just did so much work there after popping his ultimate. So IG get a second dragon, they pick up some kills, even a tower being collected in the bottom side of the map there as well. IG, they needed to play aggressively into Kog'Mo for the mid game, and so far they're doing that. And they're really... Uh, accelerated in terms of winning team fights because remember Dr. Mundo is so far behind. Only Ninja Tabi to show in terms of armor. Not even really a frontline tank. Mostly about poke with the cleavers at this point. Can't commit to being a frontline tank compared to Zatai who also doesn't have a completed major item but has that vengeful maelstrom. Already is much more effectively tanky than Mundo. And if they keep pressuring uh, these objectives in the mid game, I feel like Snake will have to seed quite a few of them. They will. I mean, IG are playing so well to keep Vision down as well. You can see Kitty's sweeping out a ward there with Leona. 
pretty much all of Snake's warding right now is very centralized. It's in the, the middle area of the map. So that means IG are free to walk around the flanks, try and get deep vision down or just get aggressive in Snake. Just have to sit back and farm. Mundo, especially, like you mentioned, needs to catch up so badly. And there's some great aggressive wards even around Dr. Mundo, spotting him out as he meets the wave in the bottom lane. The only aggression they're able to put on is towards the red side and going in on Barker. Yeah, Barker flashes out, had his ulti, but didn't want to use it, but IG will get the turret that they wanted. Say Kitty's actually tags him with the Zenith Blade. Damage coming in after the wild growth, and it looks to be enough. A death right there. Another snipe kill for Rookie. With the ultimate, the solar flare down. Did not respect the potential of another re-engage from IG. They pick up the kill, but have to respect the other members of Snake coming in and can't pick up a turret, an inner turret to add to that kill on Baka. Yeah, can't get the second, but did get the first. So 4-1 now in turrets up for IG. A good little gold lead there as well. And this is how we've seen Juggermore 4. Uh, keep ahead of it in the early game, ro out rotated especially, and just try not to force too many mid-game fights. And even IG at this point, if they forced a 5v5, would be so comfortable in that engage. And I feel like co uh, committing to this being a Juggermore is a bit of an overstatement because Juggermore is all about Cogmore being positioned at the front of a fight. So you're talking about mid-game focused utility solo laners. Instead, this is just a Dr. Mundo at the front and a very late scaling comp coming through from Snake. And that's the big difference is that Flandre is effectively useless at this point in time, just wants to pick up farm where he can, try and CS and become a late game terror. In the late game fights, make no mistake, it's a massive team comp from Snake, but they don't have the mid-game power spikes to really open up time for Crystal to have an, a meaningful mid-game. And if this sets back the timing of being relevant 10 minutes later, which is what it's looking like at this point, it's an exploitable difference for IG. I mostly agree. And I think for Dragon Ball, you still definitely need to get to a comfortable point. But like you highlighted, probably the most important difference is that the only one that really needs their farm is the Cogmore. Everyone else can kind of tread on their mid-game stats and their, just their abilities because all you're doing is protecting your one threat. Like we mentioned at the start of the draft, Mundo is a big late-game tank threat here. But right now, Flandre is barely near his early game at this point. So let's say it was a Lulu top, then absolutely 40% CDR, then you're ready to go for the Juggernaut. If it was a Maokai top, you'd be saying, okay, at least he has an earlier power spike and his team fight ready and team fight relevant with the AoE earlier. Because it's Dr. Mundo, a late game tank that needs a long laning phase, that needs farm, you have two members that have to hit specific item timings rather than just the one. You have less uh, you have more downside for your comp, for similar upside, to be honest. And it's the Dr. Mundo. It's forced the vein pick, so you can say it forced a strategic pick from IG, but they can obviously play this champion. And Snake have no answers to IG's team fights at 20 minutes, and it's looking like at least 15 minutes until they will. Yeah, I mean, Kid's a long-time vein player, like you mentioned, and does have his Phantom Dancer completed now as well. So attack speed items coming up for both AD carries. Actually, Crystal just got his shop in for a static shift, so looking pretty good. Plenty of wave clear now for the Cogwin. He'll continue... Farming aggressively here, still with a great CS score and ahead of Kid's Vein, but like we've said, the fights here at 5v5 or even in scrappy situations are just not the same here. Even Vein in some sort of skirmish is fine and Victor with a Lich Bane as well. Rookie's feeling his mid-game power. That is a very early Lich Bane over a pure AP. That is all about fighting in the mid-game. It's all about auto attacks. So that's actually a very aggressive build coming through from Rookie, not respecting any AoE damage. And to be honest, there isn't much from Snake. At this point in time, Lich Bane is a massive damage increase. And it's worth noting that Flandre, despite the fact that he has a Spirit Visage and a Giant's Belt, is not in any way tanky the kid and his silver bolts and blade the ruined king he cannot be a frontliner and honestly snake's frontline it's largely absent you've got beast who has a sight stone and some magic resist magic resist again the pickup on flandre as well I mean, Kids is going to be mowing down anyone in the front line. Yeah, and he's going to have a field day on this vein with his two item power spike coming through very nicely as well. I mean, Mundo's still tanky. Giant's belt helps a lot for sure. Beast probably looking for an Aegis, you have to think, to help against the victor. And probably a Mikhail's there for Ella. So items coming through. Crystal's very strong. 230 CS almost in a 22-minute game. But now he's going to start to get aggressive. But Snake, they need to be careful because if they get caught out of position, they will melt to IG's damage. Yeah, so they're just trying to buy time, to be honest. Honestly, just whimsy and Crystal getting a bit of harass onto Rookie and buying time for Maokai, sorry, for Mundo to split push in the bottom lane. At the flank engage, that's what IG wants, specifically uh, Zatai getting into the back line, getting the twisted advance down, but they don't have flank wards, at least on the right side of the map. Well, Kakao gets chunked out pretty massively. Rookie as well going to take some damage. So Snake feel like it's time to at least group as three or four in the mid lane and try and get some turrets and some poke down. Very effective so far. Zatai does have his righteous glory and his teleport. So if he wants to get in aggressively, you can. But right now, the Snake comp looking very Dragomori. And, and they want to 
get damage onto Rookie. He's the wave clear. Now that he's chunked out, they and Jarvan had to back away. They do take an outer turret. Two, two outer turrets to four. Only 4,000 gold lead. And Dragon has spawned. Yeah, Rabadon's here for Lulu as well. So some good timings for Snake. Flandre basically bought whatever he could in that opportunity as Rookie gets chunked to uh, below 50% health. Riff Scott looking to go down there as well. I mean, Flandre, as I said, has spent all the gold that he can afford to at this point. So he's as tanky as he's going to be for this situation. The question is, if Snake pick up 5v5, is he tanky enough? That is the big question that remains to be answered. Yeah, they're going to jump on Crystal there. He's actually going to get blown up there. Rookie gets him with the Lich Bane and Snake have to run away so quickly. Cataclysm actually trapping them in the Akathian surprise. But Snake have to kite back and forth. They've got no real damage left here. Kid will kill them all if he gets a chance to. And IG are going to get a third dragon. Just too aggressive with the positioning was a frontline as if it was Juggermore, but it's not a true Juggermore comp. Dies instantly as Cogmore, and you can see the difference. Positioning at the front in a Juggermore comp, absolutely the right way to go, but in this comp, it's too risky from Crystal, and assassinated with the burst coming through from Rookie and that Lich Bane. Yeah, it was totally fine in the lane when they're poking, but maybe not in the full on 5v5, and Rookie's Lich Bane did a lot of work, like you mentioned. Assassin Victor, not something I thought I'd see today, but it is the LPL. And it, all that Q damage was changed to the auto attack proc. Now you're adding in Lich Bane, the Q being deceptively low as a spell, it's just accentuated by a massive burst damage with the auto attack. It's in the late game when Dr. Muda can shrug off damage and get in there and really move on top of Rookie and really take advantage of him in melee range, the Lich Bane will fall off. But in this mid game, where Snake don't have any answers to the frontline burst damage coming in through from IG, the Lich Bane is a masterstroke. Yeah, Ella though will clear out a pink ward just safely enough. Puts a ward down there as well as IG might think about an early-ish Baron. Kid does have a lot of damage here on this vein early on. And even Rookie's Lich Bane, respectable there as well. Crystal has a la uh, pickaxe, sorry, possibly looking for a last whisper third here on his Cogmore. And again, getting stronger, but Flandre's not quite done with his Randuins. We're getting some items come through. Aid is actually complete for Ella, probably the next major item done for Snake, but they're behind about 4,000 gold. IG still looking aggressive, and Snake just need to buy more time. And the big thing for me is IG getting the aggressive wars down for the flank engage from Zatai. We already know he loves to do it. We saw the Hecker and flank engages last game. They have some good warding around the Snake blue buff, but get some on the red side of the, mount, of the map as well to just give yourself flexible options for engage. If you get a twisted advance onto the back line, don't necessarily go for Crystal because, of course, the Black Shield will be want to be applied onto that Cogmore. But just go for another target in the back line and engage a fight. And there's the tie actually coming forward. Use his Righteous Glory, but couldn't quite get onto Crystal. Again, Snake buying time for Flandre's Mundo specifically here. And I like that they keep in grouped as a four. They've actually got a very strong four-man stack here. And they eventually have to respond to Mundo, but Beast is forced to tunnel away. Snake just don't have that much map to play on right now. And IG have so much Baron damage. Silver Bolts, Blade the Ruin King, Phantom damage for the maximum single target damage and attack speed coming through from the veins. They have to respond. Dr. Mundo cannot keep split pushing against the uh, the pink walls that have been placed around Baron. They have to respect the Baron damage coming through to Snake. Now, Randuins is done now for Mundo, so Flando is starting to get stronger, but we talked about it already. Three items, really the big point there for Mundo to get into his scary late game situation. And IG might even delay that timer a bit just because they've accelerated some of their builds as well. So we're going to have a bit of a stand -off. Crystal still looking aggressive where he can, but IG just back away safely. Zatai is going to meet Mundo as best he can. Snake are being patient here, but IG, all they need is one big fight. But the big issue is that for this last couple of minutes, Mundo's been split pushing the bottom line, picking up CS, picking up items, suddenly up to 206 CS. He's 40 CS ahead of Maokai. That's what they've been trying to do. They're trying to be buying time for Mundo to get towards that third item. So it's been a success. The 8-2, the 4,000 gold lead, it's not enough to deal with a late game Mundo. So IG, they need to get a decisive advantage. We talked about breaking the base. It's still very relevant this game. At minimum, they need to actually translate this back Baron pressure into a Baron buff. Yeah, we saw the gold brief briefly there as well. Flanders actually up about, uh, actually even on gold against um, Zatai, which is amazing given that IG are up four turrets to two here. I like the double ages here as well. We kind of saw it in the last little engage around Baron where Rookie just does so much burst damage that this utility pieces of the comp can die a little too quickly. So reinforcing a little bit of that with some double ages action. And all IG really are doing at this point is swapping farm on Maokai for farm on Mundo. And that's never a trade you want to look at. Mundo finally trying to close the gap, but it's uh, Maokai starting to close the gap, but such a small factor for the Maokai to pick up farm. Mid game is where they have the strength IG, and the mid game is rapidly starting to end. Yeah, Crystal's actually done with his last whisper as well. So three item Cogmore 
now going to come through for even more damage. We've already seen poor Kakao getting poked back with a Bioa Canberra. Just going to start to really hurt now. And Beast, even split pushing a little bit on his own, just keeping the waves trimmed back. We talked a lot in the very early weeks of the LPL about how good Snake were at lane control. And there's a little bit of that at work here now as well. The lane control is definitely working fine. Consistently, we see Snake getting more members, starting to get some vision around Baron, then IG coming to sweep it out. It just adds artificially minutes onto the game as people have to go back, get another pink ward. It suits Snake's game plan, you have to say to a T. They're starting to get, they get the Rift Scuttler around the Dragon as well, so just setting themselves up with undeniable vision in that area of the map. And IG, they had that pressure on Baron, but it's been equalized. Yeah, I mean, they're going to get both the Crabs here, potentially. Kid, though, oh, no, Beast will uh, smite it away, so nice stuff there. Even the Binding stopping Kakao from potentially looking for an engage, so plenty of vision, more time. That's the big theme of the comp right now for Snake, and the nice thing is they're playing very measured here. Often when they get behind, they'll still look for big team fights and execute well, maybe two behind in gold. This game, know exactly what their win conditions are and just need to keep getting farm. I mean, they've seen this late game, Kogmo, do so much work for them multiple times already in the LPL. Already three item. Not necessarily the Blade of the Rune King, not necessarily the biggest damage build. Still needs some life still Still needs to work toward an Infinity Edge or maybe even the Phantom Dancer. We know that Crystal tries to shy away from the Infinity Edge for whatever reason on this Cogmore. He he uh, marches to the beat of his own drum for sure on these item builds. But they're all equally effective when you have all the setup uh, Peel CC coming through from Barco and Ello, and of course all the support of AP. You can see the stacking, the death caps completed to complement the Merlinomicon. 40% CDR, large stack of AP. This Cobblemon is going to be able to position aggressively, and he's going to be flanked by a very strong Dr. Mundo. We always talk about the Thornmail timing. It's coming soon. Yeah, it's very soon now. It's all got those components ready. Still Flandre needs to buy a bit more time, but Dragon is coming back up, and that will be IG's third. So Snake might feel pressured to find a fight here, and IG still have a window where they can kind of take it to Snake in a full-on engage. I mean, IG are definitely still ahead right now, but it's it's a small amount. It's basically team fight execution, which is one one of Snake's strengths has been team fight execution. So if Snake play the way they have all LPL season, there's no reason they can't win the next fight despite the 8-2 to two kill score, despite the 4,000 gold lead for IG. Yeah, last whisper done now for Vayne as well. So Kid powering up a little bit more there. I like this move from Snake. Just counter push, buy more time. You have no reason to get aggressively for your first dragon and risk losing a big team fight and possibly more of the map. Just, you know, keep... IG away from objectives, again, same thing. Just stall the game for as long as you can. And they've been so successful at that. Remember, IG started setting up Baron Vision, what, eight minutes ago? And that was eight minutes of power for Snake, just buying time to pick up all these buffs. The Dragon's been started. It would be the fourth Dragon, which is definitely another timer on this game. But you feel like Snake, they played a game of timers. We talked about the fact they had two between the Juggermore-ish comp and the, Ma and the Mundo. And they've definitely been succeeding a lot as we poke around Dragon. They're going to go in there, but the fourth Dragon does go to IG's the tie, though. Getting quite low there. The Wargrave popped on a crystal, but he does go down. Kid is actually able to get through all of that damage of Flandre. Not quite tanky enough. Beast, they're going to get the double knocker, but maybe looks at I Gets condemned out of a tunnel, but finds another one to keep himself safe. Only one member down, but it's the most important for Snake. And now Kakao has found Flandre as well, who's forced to flash. Ella going to move through there as well. And again, a one for one trade, but a great trade. Never mind, make it two. For one. The rookie, they had a ward around the red buff, actually came for the assassination kill, exit kill on Beast. So that just pads the stats. They pick up the fourth dragon. That's the important factor. It was definitely very close. It could have been a smite war. Kakao won that war. Timers upon timers, Space Your Time. We said that word so often in this game. Still no Thorn Mail, and five minutes till the next dragon. Five dragons, gonna be significant. Yeah, Kid even gonna deny another turret as well. So no free gold here for Snake today. Again, still stacking up. BF Sword now here for Crystal, so IE or BT. Going to be the next looking item coming through. Mundo still getting there, Flandre powering up, but hasn't quite gotten to his Thornmail yet. And you could tell the big difference there. Didn't die, but got chunked surprisingly quickly and just can't be the front line yet that his team needs him to be. And Crystal still positioning in the front line despite the fact that it's not a true Juggermore combo. He's been assassinated two team fights in a row. That's not a, doesn't sound like a significant amount, but there's only really been two true team fights in this game, and Crystal has died first in both of them. A small issue I see, though, in terms of turret sieging, Rookie's got a ranged auto attack, Vayne's got a ranged auto attack. They do not have a lot of siege pressure on IG side. So even with five dragons, with all the wave clear on Snake's side and the fact that Flandre is moving towards that un uh, unkillable tank, got the Thorn Mail now, it's going to be so hard to break the base. And breaking the base, 
over any other factor is the important thing to beat this snake line. Yeah, you have to eventually win the game as Crystal actually in a bit of trouble there. Chaos Storm gonna give him a rookie, just orders him for the kill. Ella gonna go down next as well, and this Victor does so much damage. The Lich Bane damage, just disgusting pastry time. Two death rays and an e, a Q auto attack takes down Crystal. Ella falls down as well. This is gonna be the Baron. And as we see the teleport coming through, just to make sure, 100%. Yeah, that's the tie there on the pink lord, just to make sure. Baron going to die so quickly there, and it'll explode there. IG will pick it up, and we mentioned needing a siege breaker. Baron is real good at that. And that will help with their sieges quite considerably, despite the fact they have no siege damage. I think the turret dive will have to be on, and if Crystal keeps dying early, it's going to keep happening. Yeah, he's died four times now, and three of those have been before major engagements. It's not good for the Cogmore to die, like you said. Not quite enough supports to keep him alive at all times. But plenty of support here for Crystal. Snake have played around a late game 80 carry before, but IG are just base tanking stuff now. The tie quite tanky here. Inhibitor is going to go down in mid. And the Lich Bane is just looking clever and clever because what other thing does Lich Bane give you other than burst damage? Man, it makes you fast take turrets. They break the base. That's what we were talking about, the big win condition. Vandre and Snake are looking for a re-engage, noticing that it's a 4v5 situation. Sorry, no, just 4v4 as Barker did fall off screen. But Snake, they really want to make IG pay. Yeah, Crystal actually managed to snipe kitties there as an exit kill, but IG will disengage successfully. Going to try and fight off some of the minions. Baron buff will drop off them, so it will make it a bit easier. But Snake have no first dragon. Important to remember that's big stats for Crystal especially, and even just some of the latent damage coming through. Mundo does now have a thorn mail. Items are coming through for Snake, but it might just be too late. And this is the first time that we've seen them play the Cogmore comp and miss draft, you'd have to say, pastry time. The Dr. Mundo was just a bridge too far in terms of late game scaling. They seeded so many things away, but no dragons, limited turrets on the map, and now the base is broken. They just put too much in Flandre's basket. If they'd gone for a mid game top tank, it would have been so different, but Flandre was so well held, first with Kid holding the way, then the repeated ganks in top lane, that he's almost an afterthought. And now, despite the fact that he's very tanky, the base has been broken, and a lot of the turtle strategy coming through from Crystal and the Snake protect the Cogmore comps just can't be enacted. No, and they have to fight now, which is not what they wanted to do at all here. I mean, Crystal is still over 100 CS ahead of Kid, and I think the gold's still even here. Looks like Infinity Edge is going to be Crystal's next item, so that is a big spike in damage, but the Yomu's Ghost Blade's already been completed for Kid as well. We have a second need to see Ladrot up for Rookie. Warmog's Frozen Hearts everywhere. Idea just so far ahead. It's worth noting that Snake had the option of taking this Morgana top lane and picking a Nami for disengage. They have no disengage engage on this comp barring Lulu. That's all they have. And these turrets are exploding to all of IG's damage. Yeah, Baron coming in and the Lich Bane there, especially on the Victor, doing plenty of work. I mean, Kid, a lot of attack speed in that build. Not that good at taking turrets as Vayne, but Rookie's are shoring up that weakness pretty effectively. Absolutely. Rookie is just unbelievably strong at taking turrets. Basically a twisted fate at this point with the Lich Bane doing very similar work to that champion. Then has the gravity uh, field for the disengage as well. So... There's just a lot of things working. A minute till the next dragon. Snake have no option but to fight this with a broken base against a Baron buff and a fifth dragon. There's just no way to win those fights. I mean, even if they give it up, IG are going to make them fight soon, regardless of what happens. Snake, without a first dragon, again, hurts so much in this late game situation. Crystal does have his Infinity Edge, so if there was ever a time that Snake had to fight, now is not too bad. But they're, what, 9,000 gold, 10,000 gold behind almost here? And you feel like Snake just didn't expect the last pick vein. They didn't... Respect the fact that Kid could bring that out from his arsenal. It's been a very, very long time since he showed that he was strong a vein player. Years even, potentially, pastry time. But it's such a relevant pick in this comp. And it just changed what could have been. Look, if they were forced into the Corky, he would not have been able to deal with Dr. Mundo in fights. The teleport comes through. Yeah, they actually are going to try and start the fight. Flandre wants Rookie. That's a very important target. Kid going to get chunked out here as well. And the Cogmo going to start to do work. A good stun there lands on the Flandre. And IG using terrain beautifully here. But the Black Shield's on the Crystal. Kakao's going to get melted. Flandre is massive in the front line with the wild growth there. The double kill there for Cogmo. Still firing away, but Crystal does go down. Gets condemned into the wall. Kid will fall, but Rookie is still alive, and he does plenty of damage. A snake got the pick they wanted. Got the first kill, but you have to remember that Maokai wasn't grouped. They forced a 5v4 at an excellent time, but the time Zetai came back into the fight, and Kid was doing so much damage. Actually dies with his heal up. The heal might have been enough to keep him alive. Rookie, you need to pick him or Kid at the start of a fight because the damage from the other hyper carry is just too high. Yeah, and Crystal died there 
uh, condemned into a war by a kid with wild growth on cooldown because Bucky used it on Flandre. It was actually really smart use on the Mundo because he needed to be tanky in the front line, but it meant that Snake had no good options to protect the Cogmo before. Barker might try a steal here. There's actually no smite available, but he doesn't have any vision. They use one Glitter Lance and IT probably realize that they can take it safely. Just watching this at 1800 health. It's very important that they pick up this fifth dragon. It looks like they will be. In fact, they're just waiting for their jungler to come. Nope, they burst it down. Lich Bane Q order does about smite damage anyway, pastry time. Five dragons. Baron's coming up soon. I just don't know how Snake win a fight. Well, we're going to have to find out here. QSS done for Crystal. He's kind of maxed on damage at this point. Definitely needs to get out of some key CC, so I like the defensive pickup here, but everyone else on Snake's sort of struggling. No Mikhail here, crucially. That's been a hallmark of Snake's Crystal-centric comps for quite a while. Decent damage and protection coming through, but again, even Mundo getting quite tanky. And remember, you mentioned the key factor in that fight was Kog'Maw getting condemned into a wall. So first positioning from Crystal, that was where they were fighting, so he had to have it there. But that's obviously the Black Shield getting bursted by all the AoE damage coming out from Victor. It's worth knowing he's an AoE mage. It's not the LeBlanc from the previous game where you can navigate magic damage. So Ty actually pops the right, just going, will they get Flandre? Yeah, they're actually chasing down the Mundo. He, he does pop his ulti, so pretty tanky right now, but Kid's going to join it, and Flandre should die quite quickly. He just gets destroyed by all of that damage, and IT start a 5v4. Your tanky Dr. Mundo. So you got the Thorma, but it's not enough to deal with Kid. He's doing massive damage with the Silver Bolts onto the health stacking Mundo. They don't have a wave in mid. They might try and brute force the inhibitor anyway. Will they collect? Will they look for the push bot? IG have so many options. I mean, don't undersell Rookie either. He does a significant amount of damage, especially given that they both have five dragons currently ticking away. So Snake will defend their wave. is good with Cogmo static shift, but they just IG, all they have to do is keep rotating. And Flandre back in 22 seconds, not too bad. But the base is broken open. Going to go back in for the mid inhib. IG, they haven't won a series since week five, but they split a lot of them. It looks like they will again, but man, Crystal, the damage is definitely starting. Yeah, Cogmo, not a joke here as far as late game damage goes. The uh, hallmark, as always, of a snake comp here is this Crystal Cogmore, but just not as much protection as you would like. St even some items could come to. We already mentioned Mikhail's like a broken record. Certainly something that Snake had been famous for. And Baron back up in 20 seconds. IG might look to take that away as well. So whenever we see a true Juggernaut, we know what's going to happen. We mentioned it multiple times. Cogmore at the front. The strategy this game has been more about Flandre. They eventually babied him up to this point where he's relatively tanky. But we've already seen that if he solo dives or if Flandre beasts dive, Kid does have kill potential on those tanks. And if you're using Whimsy and Wild Growth, it's a very squishy crystal at the back of the fight getting assassinated. So they don't have a team fight strategy that wins. We've seen both tries. Nothing has happened. They explode the Baron. No way for Snake to even walk in the area of the Baron. Fifth Dragon, Baron, everything working for IG. I mean, IG, all they have to do now is win the game, and that's not as easy as it sounds as no. it turns out. Snake are very strong still here at the 40-minute mark, but they've got all the tools they need to. It's going to come down to big late-game fights now. I mean, Snake are clearing out what they can. They're sitting in their base waiting for IG to come to them, and that's the correct thing to do right now, but five dragons, a Baron going off. IG have... As I've said, everything they need to close the game out. And you look back at the EDG versus Snake match. Of course, EDG were in a similar position, but they had a Corky. They didn't have a Tank Buster coming from the ADK, and they never broke the base. That's the key thing. In this game, the base was actually broken about 10 minutes ago, around the 30-minute mark. So the fact, And they have very good wave clear on IG's side as well. So with wave clear, with the fact that the base is already broken, so they don't have to walk into melee range of all the poke coming through from Cogmore, there's less turtling options available, and you have to feel like IG will eventually get the pick that they're looking for. I mean, they can just sit here and push in as much as they need to. So tie with the Baron up minions can come in very quickly from mid to bottom lane of Snake's base. Here, Flandre actually going to run in and try and zone him out, but he's kind of needed for frontline damage as well. A very long fight potential here. Flandre actually losing to the Baron up minions mostly more than anything else. And he has to back away. He has to back away. They really want to take this bottom lane turret as well. Maokai's buying a lot of time, just chilling around the mid, distracting Zatai. And Lich Bane and a late game vein. That's plenty of turret yeah, damage. They just need to get in quickly. Rookie even working on the turret is dying so quickly here. And they'll break another inhibitor here. Snake running out of options and IG are just so strong. Snake have gotten to a point where they can maybe try and start to win fights, but I think at this point they're just still too far behind. Yeah, two inhibitors, and they seed both of them. No looking for a fight. You'd have to think 
third inhibitor would be a bridge too far from Snake to come back from. It's still risky to turret dive, and that's the big thing. They're not looking to turret dive under the Nexus turrets just yet. Snake, they're buying time, but what are they waiting for? Is there an item timing they're looking for? Is it maybe a Mikhail's for Crystal? Because, of course, the locket was the pickup once again from Morgana. It's definitely not the double Mikhail's that we've seen in previous games. The wave in top has been pushed out, so this will delay IG's march towards the victory. But again, Snake, I just don't know what they're looking for. Well, they have to find something. I mean, Scimitar done now for Crystal, so he has pretty much maxed on damage as far as this particular build goes. It's up to Crystal to start swapping out items now if he wants to get stronger, but that's going to take a little too long here. His idea not going to give them that much time. Warmog's done for Mundo is actually very important, so he's very tanky now, but even has an item slot to give here as well if you wanted to move in for a second item. No Mikhail's anywhere in sight. Except maybe even Lulu's got a chalice, so she could build it if she really wanted to. But IG have so many good tools. Even Vayne's fully built with six items plus a scimitar. And their front line's good as well. Don't get me wrong, IG have a perfectly serviceable team fight comp. Yomu's yeah. ghost play for just more mid-game damage. Flandre, he built a warm because it helps him against... Uh Oh, we might see an engage. Yeah, Crystal actually going in aggressively there. Beast actually kills Kid in the back line there. Kakao diving in onto Crystal, but he's so tanky. Rookie now in the back. He's getting CC'd up, but his Zonis is there. The Chaos Storm moving in, but he's looking to go down now. So Crystal gets melted by all of the damage, and it's 2v3, but IG still might be able to beat Snake. They have so little damage here as Kitty's just getting... Hilariously chased down by Fundre. Will die eventually, that's a cleavers. The tie might not actually die in this situation as the Maokai, given how tanky he is, is just gonna leave the base instead. Ella will try and find a binding on him. The tie just kind of chilling out actually does get caught. Maybe recognize his fate, but no, he'll teleport away. <laughs> He's able to teleport away. Just waited for the CC to be used. Then the cheeky teleport away. Very, very tanky. Still a team fight win despite Vayne coming down. Okay, not in terms of kill score, but they got the last outer turret. And Snake are having a hell of a time defending their Nexus turrets. All turrets down. That's the victory condition for IG. So even though Vayne dies instantly, they do just fine. Yeah, and I mean, Cogmo just couldn't survive enough of the damage. Rookie has to die also. We saw Kid going down instantly, like you mentioned, and it looked great for Snake, but Rookie just does so much damage at this point with this Victor. We haven't seen that much late game Victor, although Snake actually trying to steal away this particular dragon. Flandre actually teleports in. Zatai's here, but he doesn't have a smite, so they should be able to get it. He might actually go down. Zatai, if he can steal this, will be an absolute master. But Beast finally gets his team a first dragon, but it might cost him his life. He's trying to scramble towards the tunnel. Does get away with the help of the Black Shield, but actually looking to chase. They'll try and find someone. Zatai had flash. was looking for the re-engage, knowing that Vayne had caught up. Actually, Vayne might find Flandre. Flandre backing in a very poor spot, forced to flash out from under the Cataclysm here. Can't really overstate how important 6% stats at this stage is for Crystal especially, but he needs more. He still needs more, absolutely. The 6% is going to be relevant in a team fight, and denying the 12% also from IG could be relevant, but they've already given away all their outer turrets. Will IG even look for a team fight? Maybe they'll just split threats and can push this outer top inhibitor. Inhibitors are starting to respawn. Team fights, IG, no guarantee to no, win. Snake wanna fight, Bucker actually did buy the Mikhail, so Crystal is very well protected at this stage. Kitty's getting caught out here, he's quite tanky on the Leona, but he's gonna get killed potentially. The ulti used a little early there, and Kid just on the beast in the back line. The tide diving in onto Crystal, buying time. Flandre melting to the vein damage here along with the Victor. The tie might finally go down. Crystal trying to get it done, but he gets stunned up, blown up there by Victor and IG. They've killed the one threat they need to. The chosen one finally goes down as Crystal falls. Ella gonna be killed. Completed for an ace. His kid gets a quadra kill, actually, in and amongst all of that action. Almost a penta there for kid, but IG, they'll take the game. And you almost never see it, but actually, a Maokai is so much tankier than a Dr. Mundo in the late game, because Vayne against a health stacker does so much damage. Silverbolt powering down Flandre. Crystal dies next. So does Snake's hopes of winning this game. And one for one is a split once again for Invictus Game. Crystal so consistent. 500 CS by the end of that game and just couldn't carry it. A genius last pick there for Kid, who has honestly had zero hard carry performances until then. He's been consistent, he's been great, he's played a lot of Siva, played Callista, whatever his team needs, but he's never really stepped up to hard carry until now. And Snake, they actually misfire in terms of executing this Protect the Kug'Maw Juggermore comp. They had Juggermore in their hands, just stick the, the uh, Morgana in top lane, take a Nami for a disengage option, but instead they went greedy. They went for Dr. Mundo and said, okay, you already hovered the Corky. Corky's mid-game and pushing potential does make sense if you want to push down tower to break the base early. 
and, and you know, Corky can't get through Dr. Mundo. So you can see the synergy coming through there. But switching it to a Vayne, as you mentioned, was a masterstroke. You could see how easily Vayne was able to dispatch Flandre on a six-item Dr. Mundo in the late game. And the tank bust of war, it went to Vayne. It did indeed. So a great win there for IG. Another split for Snake and IG as they move through the rest of the LPL weekend. But we're going to have a quick break. And when we return, there are more LPL matches to come.